Proof of coverage V11 has been implemented successfully after countless rollbacks and delays. This was a highly anticipated update to the network that mainly targeted power output of miners in different regions around the world. The main goal was to normalize power output and abide by power output regulations in different jurisdictions. Many people brushed it off as just another update, however that all changed once people's rewards started to fluctuate, or their earnings started to become invalidated by the new protocol. It is impossible to make a generalized statement on the impact of proof of coverage V11. The only thing you could do is make sure you're updating your miner settings correctly to avoid having your miner rewards from being invalidated. In today's video, I will go through exactly how to know what updates to make to your miner and how Helium expects you to calculate those figures accurately. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here in the Crypto Compound channel. I hope you're all having a great day. Helium price currently over $40, over 42 in fact right now. A beautiful, beautiful rally from being sub $30 a few days ago as you can see here. However, today we will be talking about proof of coverage V11. A lot of people brush this off as just another network update. However, there is critical information that you need and there are critical steps people need to take in order for their rewards to not be invalidated. The network is now trying to make sure that everyone's miners are tuned the same and are outputting the same amount of power that will ensure that your rewards and your beacons and your transits are validated on the network and you earn HNT rewards. Today's video, we are going to go through every the reasoning behind it, how it works, and what you need to do. Believe it or not, I actually made a PowerPoint trying to outline this as clearly as possible. It is not perfect. However, any comments you have by the end or questions, just put them in the comment section below. Guys, if you appreciate this kind of stuff, please hit the like and subscribe button. It is the best way to support the channel and I really, really appreciate it. All right, guys, jumping in here, understanding proof of coverage V11, how to not be invalidated in this new world. First here, big disclosure, this information that you're gonna see is not, is probably gonna make some radio engineers or RF engineers ears bleed. It is really, depending on where you go online, you will see that at least some people say it's not the correct way to do it, however, I am going by what Amir Halim here has alluded to and what Helium has said to do for this network update and calculations are according to what Amir Halim and Helium have said. As you can see here, he actually says this specifically in response to someone's Reddit thread. So this is what you need to do for Helium. We are gonna go through how the network is designed to work now, how to calculate the numbers you are using and how to enter those correctly so you do not get invalidated. All right, how the network is designed to work. In this example, we are gonna be using a Rack V2 miner spec, all stock. This is just, if everything was stock and two miners are communicating, as you can see here on the right-hand side, for the features, you can see that the output of a Rack V2 miner, and I believe all miners, let me know if I'm incorrect in the comments below, but I believe all miners are 27 for the sake of this, we're gonna call everything DB. There's no DBI. We're gonna just say everything is DB. So power output of a helium st a stock miner is 27 DB. And as you can see here, the antenna parameters for a stock rack V2, we're gonna say is 2.8 DB. So stock setup is 27 DB from the miner plus 2.8 DB from the antenna, the stock antenna gives us 29.8 DB total. And of course, even with your stock, with the stock setup, you still need to select the stock antenna in the Helium app. Now all the all of the minor antennas are now in the app and selectable. So you would select stock rack V2 minor antenna and the network will automatically know that's what you're using and they'll know that your power output is 2.8 or whatever it is for whatever stock antenna that's programmed into the app already. So if you're using, if your settings are stock and you've selected the stock antenna, the network will reduce your power by the DB of your antenna. So it would auto reduce this setup by 2.8. And if it does that, it's going to reduce the 29.8 by the 2.8 and you're gonna be transmitting 27 dB, and if you're communicating with someone else set up properly, 27 dB will be received. You want this side of the equation, the transmit and the received side, you want them to equal each other. And what's happening is the network now is tuning some people's 
uh, miners to try and get them equal based on what they enter in the app. So if this side equals this side, this is good and consider validated. Validated equals max earnings. Now, now, how to calculate the numbers you are using. Of course, if your setup is stock, select the stock antenna in the app and then you're good to go. If you have an aftermarket, you have to keep watching. Example, aftermarket 5.8 rack DBI antenna. This is the antenna that I actually just purchased and am installing. Hopefully the coaxial cable is here. It says on Friday, which is Christmas Eve. Hopefully it gets here that day and it will be set up. I'm very excited for that. However, if you're using an aftermarket rack 5.8 DBI antenna, proof of coverage V11 now takes into consideration power from aftermarket setups. In this aftermarket setup, you have your miner, which is still 27 dB, and you have 5.8 dB antenna. That gives you 32.8 dB total, right? Now, in this example, we're showing if you don't do anything, if this miner and another communicate and do not update your settings, 27 dB from the other miner, let's say, does not equal the 32.8 dB that you're sending out. This is bad and considered invalidated, which means less earnings. Now, this is the slide that is showing if you update the settings correctly, the app and the network will tune your miner to go back down to 27 dB on to match the let's call it 27 dB on one side to equal 27 dB on your side. So you have now a 27 dB miner plus 5.8, that's 32.8 dB total. If you update your settings correctly, the network accounts for the additional aftermarket power and reduces your output by 5.8 dB, let's say, because of course, it, it doesn't really matter if it's getting to zero or getting to 27. What, what matters is that one side equals the other. So if this miner and another communicate and you do update your settings, the 27 dB transmit from the other miner is going to equal the 32.8 dB total output of your miner. And then the proof of coverage V11 now is going to reduce that 32.8 by the 5.8 because you entered in that you have the 5.8 additional power. And that is going to equal the 27 dB from the other side that is good and considered validated. So by entering in that you have a 5.8 dB antenna, the network reduces your power by 5.8, which makes your 27 equal the other 27s, which is good as long as one side equals the other side, whether it's 27 and 27 or zero and zero, you just need to enter what you have correctly. In this case, 27 will equal 27. This is good. It's validated. Validated equals more earnings. Now, if this is the same example, except you also have 100 feet of LMR 400 on the side, here's another little picture of the antenna. And as you can see here, I'll put a link in the description to the website where you can find the specs on your type of wire and the length, and you can find out the uh, reduction that you need to use. It's standard for LMR 400, as you can see here, 100 feet is a 3.9 dB reduction per 100 feet. So in this situation, you have your minor, which is 27 dB, you have 5.8 dB of the antenna, and you, you're, sub, you're losing 3.9 dB in cable loss. So your total is now 28.9 dB. Now, in this situation, you would enter in 1.9 dB of additional power into the app because then this would take the 27 from one side from the other miner. On your side, you have 27 dB from your miner, 5.8 dB from your antenna. You're losing 3.9 dB in cable loss. And then proof of coverage V11 needs to know to reduce it another 1.9 because that's the additional power you have. And that will, e that will turn into 27 dB equals 27 dB received. This is good and considered validated. Validated equals more earnings. So get your aftermarket numbers. You need one, your dB of your aftermarket antenna, and then you need your cable loss. Standard, if you're using LMR 400, which is what I used, it's 3.9 dB loss per 100 feet. And let's say if you have 50 feet, reduce that by half, 1.95 dB in cable loss. And then you enter this figure into the Helium app. So this is the example using what we just went over. If you have a 5.8 dB aftermarket antenna and you have 100 feet of LMR 400, you have 5.8 from your antenna dB you're losing 3.9 from your wire. So you have 1.9 in additional power. So you are going to enter 1.9 into the Helium app so the network 
can tune your miner correctly. The important thing here, guys, the overarching rule here is you need to enter your specifications correctly into the app so that the network can tune it properly. You need to let them know what kind of ant aftermarket antenna you're using and the amount of power you're losing from your cable. And then once that is entered correctly, the network will do the rest. You just need to calculate those two numbers and enter them into the app. Please let me know what questions you have. I hope this helps. I really tried to outline it as clearly as possible, but any questions down below, let me know. I'll, I will try and get to every single one, but I hope this helped, guys. Thank you all for watching until the end. Let me know your questions below. Good luck out there. Please hit that like and subscribe if you have not already. But just like that, this video is over, and I will see you next time.